I'm Father Gray, and this is a St. Mary's Sunday. This Sunday, the second Sunday of Lent, we always hear about the Transfiguration. Let's read it. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took Peter, James, and John, and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, each as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. From the cloud came a voice, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, he charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the most beautiful things about this isn't just the transfiguration of Jesus, but also how it affected the people who were watching. Jesus' clothes become white, so white that no fuller on earth could bleach them that white, so says the Gospel. And of course, these other two appear, Moses and Elijah. But what about those three disciples of the Lord? How were they changed? Well, they've witnessed something grand. In our lives, we often take part in things that takes us time to understand. Now, don't think that just because it takes time, therefore we are being lazy if we don't give time to it. Maybe the time isn't right. And of course, in this gospel, it even says that they wondered what the Lord meant by the words he used. The time wasn't quite right, but it did come. You know, in our hearts are lots of different things that at any given moment we don't necessarily understand. Hopefully our relationship with the Lord is rich enough that, frankly, at any given moment we don't understand that either, that it's not immediately understandable. Some things really are immediately understandable. If you are at a traffic light and the light turns green from red, it means proceed with caution, right? That's something which is immediately understandable. It's not even something that we think about too much, even as we accomplish the task of carefully looking around us, hopefully. But there are also other events in our lives which don't necessarily lend themselves to being immediately comprehensible. Sometimes, for example, when we feel the emotion of love, it is not entirely clear what that means to us. And so we also spend a little bit of time hopefully understanding it more, and maybe we don't have the time to spend on it, and so we have to let it go. But then it comes back. Maybe it comes back in our dreams even. Now, maybe this is all very psychological, but the point of the matter is this. I would say that the most important things in our lives are things which are not immediately understood. It takes time to be able to sit with it and understand it and really receive everything that is in it in a really full and beautiful way. That being said, let's put ourselves in the shoes of the disciples. Here they are and they are witnessing something which is tremendous. It's so tremendous that even the details about clothes are tremendous. And what do they know? All they know is that the Son of Man must die and he will be raised. And they don't even know what that means, that very simple message. We too can be confused by the things around us, and I hope also our life with the Lord can be confusing at times, maybe challenging, maybe even a distraction sometimes. But it's rich, and it's worthy, and it's something which should excite the very nature of our humanity. As Christians, 
we're not merely Christians who, you know, go along with whatever the Christian thing is, but hopefully also Christians who feel these things. Our emotions are not necessarily the most rigorous and reliable way of understanding our faith, but our faith, which should touch every piece of us, also exists in our emotions, and sometimes it's in our emotions that we become most confused. In those moments when God is nearest to us, moments of the transfiguration for us, for example, this is often the experience. Don't believe me? All right. Well, how about those moments of intense suffering, of grief, of pain? In these moments, frankly, our Lord is very close to us, even though we can't tell and are very confused by it. In moments of elation, in moments of joy, also, he is close to us. In the quiet moments when we don't even know anything that is going on, when we are simply resting, our Lord is close to us. And even in those times that we think we see the Lord clearly, he is closer to us than we can even imagine. It's not that we are being confounded by the presence of the Lord, not at all but rather that there's always more beyond. Our relationship with the Lord is deep and worthy of these sentiments. And this message of the Transfiguration reminds us that year after year, even as we celebrate these mysteries that lead to the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord, Easter in a word, that it is actually new if we allow ourselves to spend the time and understand it a little bit. The thing about confusion is that often we will simply cast it away, that when something doesn't fit into our framework of mind, we just won't think about it. Well, our relationship with the Lord is something which is difficult pretty much all the time, in the sense that the Lord is so much beyond us, and sometimes we feel incapable of being able to really understand that. And yet the Lord remains with us and desires to be close to us. It's not merely a paradox but actually one of these things that we should have a bit of a struggle with. This time that we spend in Lent with the Lord and observing the marvelous things that he has done in Scripture, hearing about them again, and also hopefully with our penances as he does marvelous things with us right now, are very rich and we may not see the full scope of it at the moment, but Hopefully in this time, you're also allowing the space for the Holy Spirit to work in us. So, in this now second week of Lent, hopefully we can find the time to do just that, to sit with the Lord and allow the moments of confusion in our lives to also be with him, that we may come to know our Lord more and more fully.